Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome all of you to the live program number 148 at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is squadron leader Pong Paul Pechkum from the Bumi Bowl Adulidej Hospital, Thailand. And also, we have Dr. Chainin Angtong from Thailand. Dr. Pong Paul Pechkum is an AO faculty and he regularly lectures for the AO courses in Thailand. And today he's going to enlighten us on how to improve outcome of pylon fracture treatment. Over to you, Pong Paul. Hello, good evening, Professor Kopalan. Good evening, Dr. Shayanin. May I start? Okay, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Pong Paul Pechkam from Pumi Pon Adunyadeh Hospital, Thailand. Today, uh, I will talk about how to improve outcome of pylon fracture treatment. Uh, the keys to success are concern of soft tissue injuries, apply stage protocol, evaluated fracture pattern and proper surgical approach, and choose a good definite fixation and early range of motion. It is a severe injury, so the soft tissue injuries could be severe. There may be blister Blisters, maybe clear field blister, which is a partial thickness injuries. There are the epithelial cells inside and rapid re-epithelialization and less complication. The other is a blood field blister, which is a full thickness injuries and involve papillary vasculature. So it's give us slow re-epithelialization and increased complication. The management of blisters composed of uh, maybe sterile unroofing, sterile aspiration, or leaving the blister intact. But no evidence to support any method over another. But uh, you should avoid making incision through a blister, especially a blood filled one. Next is about a uh, stage of surgeries. There may be one or two stage. At primary surgery, uh, we do the uh, primary, uh, the one stage surgery that show a good result. But later on, the later study show us a good to fair result and have a major complication rate. So concerning about soft tissue complication, majority of surgeons choose uh, two stage surgery and waiting for the soft tissue for recovery. About two stage approach. The first stage is uh, temporary stabilization with uh, external fixation and waiting for adequate soft tissue condition. It takes time about 10 to uh, 14 days. We may check by the wrinkle size and resolution of the blisters. After the blisters gone, we can do second stage which is uh, definitive internal fixation. Meanwhile, we can do CT scan to make a pre-op planning, which is very important. To evaluate the fracture pattern, we have a lot of classification. The classic one uh, is uh, Rudy and Algover classification. They use the displacement and degree of comminution to be a factor to consider. But they are poor intra-observer and poor inter-observer variation. So the next is uh, from AO. The classifies to be type A, which is extra articular, type B partial articular, and type C complete articular. And the newest one is about four column concept of uh, Professor Tang. They are divided the pylon to be anterior column, posterior column, medial column, and lateral column. Like in this case, we have lateral column included fibula fracture, posterior column included form and fragment, anterior column included uh, chaput fragment, and medial column included uh, medial malleolus. And we also have a die punch, uh, which is a uh, impacted fragment that we have to bring it down. Next, we do a uh, surgical uh, planning about the uh, approach. 
positioning, implant, and reduction technique. We have a lot of surgical approach to get to each column. But uh, keep in mind that the skin bridge should be at least six centimeter to prevent the soft tissue complication. About positioning, for me, I may start with the prone position to address the posterior column and then turn the patient to be supine and get to the anterior column. But you may use the flip over position too to save time. About the definite uh, surgery, we have a lot of choice. Maybe open reduction and internal fixation. Maybe minimally invasive surgery. Maybe intramedrally nailing, external fixation, or primary arthrodesis. The goal of surgery is uh, are the anatomic uh, reduction of the articular surface, uh, good alignment, uh, rigid fixation, and early range of motion. Open reduction and internal fixation still be mainstay of surgical treatment. We can go directly to see the articular segment and reduce it. And we can manipulate the impacted fragment also. But uh, this may be the second soft tissue violation for the patient. So we should uh, uh, choose the proper surgical incision. The classic principle of Rudy and Alcova tell us to do plating of the fibula to gain length, articular reduction and reconstruction, bone grafting and medial buttress plate. But uh, only medial buttress plate may be not enough for the coronal fractures and anterior comminution. Like in this case, only medial plate, uh, we will miss the chaput fragment and miss the Forkman fragment also. So we come to the next uh, concepts about uh, uh, four column concept, give us general, uh, general principle. principle. Uh, the thing is that every fractures in every column has to be addressed. First, maybe fix the fibula or tibia to restore length. Reconstruction of the tibial platform. Autograph, internal fixation and early range of motion. Uh, about reduction, the destruction of TBO Taylor joint is helpful in reduction by the ligamental taxis. We may use external fixator, femoral distraction, or calcaneal traction. But keep in mind that the impacted fragment uh, still be there. We have to open and bring it down directly because no ligament attached to it. About the sequence of fixation in the simple fracture of fibula, Fibula may be done first, and it will help to reduce the alignment of the tibia too, in case of intact AITFL or PITFL. But for the comminuted fracture of the fibula, tibia should be done first to prevent my reduction of the fibula. And about sequence of tibial reconstruction for partial articular pattern, we may reduce articular fragment to the stable column. But for complete and articular pattern, we will turning C type into A type by reconstruction the articular segment first and then fix articular blocks to the metaphyseal segment. Uh, normally, uh, we will reduction from simple fragment to comminuted fragment, usually from posterior to anterior. When we go from posterior, looking for the posterior cortical spike, which is the key, because you cannot see the articular surface from the posterior, but this one, you will see it. Reducing them will reduce the joint surface too. But beware about the screw from posterior. Don't make it too long to catch the anterior column because uh, you will cannot uh, close the anterior column. For fixation of the posterior column determined by um, fragments, size, and fracture extension. For split fragments, you may go from anterior. Use a leg screw from anterior to posterior. But for a complex fractures, you may go from posterior and put the posterior buttress plate. And fixation of the anterior column. For a simple fracture, we may use the posterior to anterior screws. 
the medial plate add on with the screws or the anterolateral plate in case of comminuted one. For fixation of the medial column, we may use buttress plate, medial malleolar screws, or tension band wiring in case of small fragment. Uh, the role of minimally invasive surgery in pylon fractures is in the case of extra articular fractures or split articular fractures. Pros are uh, preserve osseous blood supply, better biological repair, and lower soft tissue violation. But the cons are indirect reduction and very difficult to reduce the impacted fragment. We can do MIPO of medial plate plus the percutaneous screws to add on. Or we may use the conventional plate at the shaft fractures and add the percutaneous screw at articular fractures. We may do mini open at the articular fragment and use the Hinterman retractors and reduce the articular segment and put a small buttress plate. Or we also can do MIPO of the medial plate plus the MIPO of the anterolateral plate also. So a uh, take home message, uh, to get a good results, we have to concern about the soft tissue injuries, apply stage protocol, uh, evaluated fracture pattern, a proper surgical approach, and choose a very good choice of the definite fixation, and let the patient uh, early range of motion, and you will give the good result. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Pongpol. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Chanin Anton to share his screen? Shannon, you need to unmute. All right. Thank yes. you so much, uh, Professor Kobalan, for this invitation. Um, I would like to present about the case discussion. Um, a 34-year-old male, uh, far from height, uh, he had a pain at the ankle area and limited range of motion due to pain. He had no wound, open wound, or distal neurovascular injury. And you can see uh, the, the fracture over here. It is the pylon fracture in particularly, as you can see in the AP and the lateral X-ray. And in this case, you can see from the CT scan, It is, um, you can see it's like a fracture at the anterior column, the medial column, the big posterior column, and the lateral column divided into two pieces, anterior, anterior lateral and posterior lateral over here. In accordance to the column um, classification, I think it's like a variant of the four columns because the lateral column was divided into anterior and posterior, uh, posterior, anterior, posterior, anterior lateral and posterior lateral fragment. And for the sagittal cut, you can see the fragment at the posterior, posterior lateral also. And this is the colonal cut. You can see that uh, the medial fragment is quite big, but the lateral fragment is quite comminuted. And this is the three-dimensional CT. You can see the big, big posterior, posterior uh, medial and cover to the posterior medial fragment. But you can see the fragment over here, the, the um, posterior lateral fragment, and the comminution over here, and over here also, the anterior lateral fragment, and this is the anterior fragment. 
So in this case, um, we may think about the initial treatment and the definitive treatment in accordance with Dr. Pong Pong's lecture. Um, we respect the condition of the soft tissue. That's why we need to do the uh, external fixation spanning technique first to uh, make the distraction also uh, to make the distraction to keep the alignment of the fractures as you can see here and here the alignment um, is quite better and then we think about the definitive treatment so we have to wait until the substitute swelling getting better and we think about the approach so you call approach and the fixation implant in accordance with Professor, uh, Dr. Pong Pong's lecture, uh, you may think about the anterior approach or auto approach, uh, such as the posterior approach. But if you want to combine the anterior and posterior approach, um, sometimes you you may have the you may set the patient into the supai first, and you make the anterior approach, and then flip the patient to put, to do the prone position to make the posterior approach. But in this case, I use I should. I choose the technique that the like a um, supai position, but have the I can flip the patient like a semi or the decubitus uh, position uh, without the need of the chain of the position. So I use only one position, supai, and I can um, uh, push the patient into the some some kind of the semi lateral position to do the posterior lateral approach. So I select the anterior combined with the posterior lateral approach and the fixation implant, I select the anterior lateral locking plate. And you can see here, I, uh, with my technique, I try to fix the intertubular fragments to be the same, uh, the same major fragment first. And after that, I will um, make the fixation from the articular fragment to the main diaphyseal fragment. So this is the reduction of the interarticular fragment first at the anterior lateral uh, to the um, medial fragment and medial fragment to the um, some the distal part of the diaphyseal fragment. And I fix anterior first at the anterior lateral fragment and the medial fragment. And after that, I go to the uh, posterior lateral approach. The my my approach was in the interval between the um, Achilles tendon and peroneal tendon, and I go to reduce the posterior lateral fragment and fix with the screw, as you can see here. And after that, I come back to the anterior approach again, and I fix with uh, the whole articular fragment here to the major diaphyseal fragment here with the locking plate, anterior lateral locking plate. But in this kind of plate, you can see that if you try to fix the uh, distal fragment to be attached um, like a perfectly to the area of the anterior part, the, the proximal part of the plate may not be attached over here. I think it may not be um, totally anatomic plate. But anyway, I care about the articular fragment more. So I think this part should be good. So I fix here until I accept the alignment, especially the entire articular alignment. And then I complete the fixation to the diaphyseal fragment. This is the mortise view in the fluoroscopy. And the post-operative x-ray, I think the alignment is quite um, acceptable for me. With the anterior approach between the um, fibulis anterior and extensor hollicis longus and posterior lateral, posterior lateral approach between peroneal tendon and Achilles tendon. And this is the wound at two weeks after the surgery. I use the longitudinal anterior approach here. The wound healed quite well. And this is the posterior lateral approach. And the wound um, have no um, problem. And this is the, the medial side of the leg and ankle and foot at two weeks post-operation. 
and this is the follow-up x-rays. The fracture healed quite well, and uh, he had an eventful recovery after the surgery. Thank you for uh, your kind attention. Thank you, Chinen, uh, for that wonderful uh, case presentation as well. A uh, few questions uh, to uh, Dr. Pongpol to begin with. Yeah, Dr. Pongpol. Okay. Uh, yeah. how, how, uh, when you mention posterior approach, you always go postural lateral, isn't it? Uh, most of the case, I have to go to the Volkman fragment, which is the postural lateral fragment. So uh, the postural lateral approach is uh, appropriate for that. But in the case that the, the fragment go medially, sometimes I have to go postural medial, but it's very small case for that. And when you go postural medial incision, how would you place the plate or which is the plate that you can comfortable with because there is the uh, contents of the flexor retinaculum there putting a plate there i mean you can put a plate but what is the profile of plate that you would choose no normally at the post raw medial i will put the medial plate but tracing but if i need to fix at the post raw medial i will fix with the low profile uh, screws not not the plate I, I never use the plate for that open it for reduction normally okay and uh, do you think that, see, suppose a patient has a fibula fracture and also an anterolateral fragment, do you think that can be approached with a single incision, single anterolateral incision? Yeah, uh, in, in my opinion, if you do only one incision, the anterolateral incision has to be very long, longer than normal if you want to fix the fibula also. Um, uh, some case we have to do lateral approach, through lateral approach and make it a big incision and we can go through the anterior lateral fragments also. I think maybe if you choose one, uh, one uh, incision, the lateral approach extended may be more appropriate in, in my opinion. I think, well, thank you for that. Uh, Chinin, uh, can you unmute? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chani, in the case that you showed, excellent case and beautiful production, it almost looks like textbook, x-rays, the kind of work that you do, really happy to see that. Uh, a question is, do you require such a long incision for an anterolateral approach? Can you do a small distal incision to get your articular fragments right, and you slide the plate and you make a small proximal incision to put the other screws? Mm, that is a very good question. Um, I think um, it, it is possible, but um, in, in my opinion, sometimes when, when we fix at the distal part and, and we, we, we get it like a good reduction already and we try to fix it with the main diaphyseal fragment, we have to um, put the plates put the press underneath the muscle and, and the area of the anterior lateral part of the leg, of the distal leg is filled with, I think it's bulky muscle. It's a bit difficult to, um, to make the uh, screw fixation, but actually we can, but um, we, I think we, we may have the, uh, some, disturb, some disturbance from the bulky muscle, but actually uh, we, we can try, I think. It is and, uh, yeah, thank you for that. How often do you do an anterolateral plate compared to an anteromedial plate? Oh, okay. Um, anterolateral. I know, I know it's based on the fracture fragment. I agree to that, but how yes. often? Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Um, actually, uh, I I did this approach almost like at eighty percent of my cases because I have the basic from the. Uh, total ankle replacement with the anterior approach. So I'm quite familiar uh, with this approach. And I think we can see both sides, the lateral side and medial side. Sometimes I can dissect until I see the medial, medial side of the medial malleolus. So I, I'm quite familiar with, with this approach. Yeah. 
Now, a question to both of you, Dr. Pongpol and Thailand. See, I have used both these approaches. And what I find is whenever I use the anterolateral approach, problem is I put a plate, I strip a lot of these muscles from the bone. And the problem is when you do that, on the medial side, you already, you do not have muscle. Okay, so you're entirely relying on the musculature or the blood supply to the bone from the posterior side. So mm. I have found that the anterolateral approach devascularizes the bone more compared to the anteromedial. What is your take on that? Mm. Um, Pongpun, you can answer first. Yeah, yes. Uh, for me, I think the, the, the anteromedial or the medial approach, I think it has a skin, uh, very thin skin. So uh, sometimes if we put a plate on, uh, sometimes it will have a skin complication or irritation. For me, I, 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 if I can, I will choose to put the plate on the uh, lateral side for me. And the thickness of the muscle will, uh, will be, we, we, we have a less uh, soft tissue complication, but beware of the proximal part of the plate. Sometimes it will uh, compress to the vascular or the nerve. So I make a split incision at the end of the, the plate to see surely that no vessel or nerve beneath the plate. Yeah. I think, I think, um... Uh, Pong Pong's idea is quite good. Um, to me, uh, I think uh, the lateral side of the distal leg, um, uh, the vascularity on that area, um, the majority is from the peroneal artery, I think, peroneal artery. But the, this peroneal artery is, is in the muscle area. So I, when I put the place on the anterior lateral side of the distal tibia or the tibia sharp, I try to make it uh, as attached to the bone as much as possible, like a superior osteo approach to, to make less disturbance to vascularity to the peroneal artery. So, uh, so far I, I did not have the experience about the uh, wound complication or the non-union by, by this approach. Uh, I think that's all the questions that we have. We had a fantastic session uh, with Dr. Pongpol, a fantastic presentation on, uh, I think those are very key points that you require to know for uh, treating a pylon fracture. And of course, with the fantastic uh, case presentation that uh, Chinen did, we had a wonderful session. And it was lovely listening to both of you. And it is a great pleasure. And thank you for coming in. And we really look forward for this combination in future one more time later on. Thank you so much, Dr. Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you both of you. Thank you. Thank you.